A lengthy inbox list of emails like this one is overwhelming and makes it really easy to miss an important message. So I'm going to show you how to structure your inbox so that it is more efficient, easier to keep organized, and so that your important emails are a lot easier for you to spot. But before you can start any true email intervention, it's really important to get your inbox down to a manageable size. My inbox has over 3,000 messages in it. So I'm going to show you how to bulk delete a lot of emails at one time. If you have several hundred or more emails in your inbox, this is the fastest way to delete several at once. There are three steps to this process. I'm going to show you them and then list all of them on the screen so you will be able to pause the video and try them yourself. First, I'll type into the search bar the word before, a colon, and then a date in year, month, and day format. This query is going to select all emails before a certain date. And I'm going to go back two months, but you can choose whatever date you like. Maybe you want to go back to the beginning of the school year, maybe the beginning of the semester. Notice there are no spaces anywhere in this search query, and you do need to list the year first. I'm going to hit enter and skim my query results to make sure it worked properly and make sure everything looks good. If so, click the select all box here. Now this is only selecting the 50 messages on this page, not all of the emails that match my query since I have several pages of results. So to select all of them, I need to click the select all messages that match this search. When I do that, I am told that all of my messages are selected, although I am not given an exact number. To get rid of these old email messages, my next step is just to click delete. And this will move thousands of emails from my inbox to my trash bin, where they're going to live for 30 days before they are deleted truly forever. If you think you have an important message that you want to keep that is prior to the date you entered, you can unselect it here quickly if you see it, or you can just search for it in your trash after we do the batch delete and you can restore it. I'm really confident that I don't need any messages from my inbox that are over two months old. So I'm going to click the trash can icon and confirm my action. I have a lot of emails, so it's going to take several seconds for my batch delete process to fully run. After all of the emails are deleted, you can clear your before search query and then select or go back to your inbox. Now the number of emails in my inbox has gone from over 3000 to about 300, which is way better. I still have a lot of work to do, but the number of messages for me to work with is a lot more manageable. Now you try. Choose a date that you feel like is a safe bet to delete all emails prior to. Pause the video and follow the steps on the screen. All right, our next step is to configure the overall structure of our inboxes so that it works better for you. The default setup for Gmail is to have a primary and a social tab. I do like that all of these social emails have been pulled out of my main inbox, but the lengthy list of emails in my primary tab is still way too long and filled with so many irrelevant emails that really don't seem that important for me to read. I'm going to show you the two inbox structures that I like best, and then you're going to have a chance to pause the video and customize your inbox based on your preferences. First, visit the settings icon and choose see all settings. And select the inbox tab. The first option is to stick with the default inbox type, but to make it more functional by enabling some more categories. I'm going to turn all of these categories on, scroll to the bottom and save my changes. When I go back to my inbox, I can see that my primary inbox now only has eight messages in it. All of the sharing notifications from Google and updates from Google Classroom and Schoology are now on this Updates tab, and most of the junk mail that I get is on this Promotions tab. This definitely makes it much easier to find important emails, but I do worry that Google is going to miscategorize something like it did right here with this help ticket I filed with Khan Academy. Google put Khan Academy's response to my ticket on the Promotions tab, but this is really something I need to read and respond to, and it's really easy to miss here on the Promotions tab. For me, this tabbed inbox approach is definitely better, but 
I'm not likely to frequently visit these other tabs, so my inbox is probably going to flood again with messages. They'll just be more out of sight. And emails that are sent to large groups, say like from your counselor to all students in your grade level, they're often going to end up on one of these tabs. So if you use the tabbed approach, you need to be really good about checking your other tabs regularly because sometimes an important email will end up on one of these other tabs by mistake. And because of that, I personally prefer the prioritized inbox approach, which sets up buckets instead of tabs for your emails. So let's take a look at that. Let's go back to settings, see all settings, inbox. This time, I will choose priority inbox from the inbox type menu. This creates three main sections in my inbox. I'm going to add in a fourth category for important emails that I've already read, because I do like to have a different bucket for emails that seem important that I haven't read and emails that are important that I have read. So I'm going to add that. Notice you can customize a lot of other options, including how many emails show up in each section. So you can adjust all of these settings and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, save my changes and see how my inbox looks. Now I don't have any tabs. My email is just all on one page, but I have emails that Google identifies as important and that I've not read at the very top followed by a section for emails that I add a star to. I haven't added any stars to emails, but this is a really good place for super important emails, so I like having a starred option. Once I've read an email that was identified as important, it will move into the important section down here, and then everything else is where Google puts items that appear to Google to be updates, promotions, and such. I really like this format because the emails that are most likely to need my attention usually end up at the top and my junk emails are most likely grouped at the bottom, but everything's on one page and I still have a chance to skim all of my email just in case Google miscategorized something. I do still have a lot of junk email in this inbox that we are going to take care of soon, but right now let's just worry about the structure of your inbox. So I want you to pause the video and set up your inbox to either have additional tabs if you like that approach, or change your inbox style to the priority inbox if you prefer to see different categories all on one page. The next thing you need to do to make your inbox function well is to create labels or folders for emails that you tend to save. A huge mistake is to use your inbox as a place to save your mail. Your inbox is a temporary location from where you will respond, delete, or quickly move out most email into folders. So you need to create folders or labels that you can move your email into. To create a label in Gmail, let's go again to settings and all settings, but this time we will visit the labels tab. Scroll down to the bottom until you see a create new label button. It's a good idea to create labels for each of your classes and any activities you participate in. As you get closer to graduation, you will probably want to add labels for college applications or scholarships and things like that. It is easy to easily add more labels directly from your inbox. So right now, just set up some labels based on your best guess so you already have an easy organized place set up that you can move your email into. After I create my labels and go back to my inbox, I'm going to see them listed right here. Pause the video now so you have some time to create your own labels. The very last quick tip on structuring your inbox is to decide if you want your left menu collapsed like mine and whether you want a reading pane. I like my left menu really small like this. It will expand when I hover over it, but it doesn't take up a whole bunch of room permanently on my screen. Simply click these three lines in the top left to toggle between a fully expanded left menu or one that is collapsed until you hover over it like this. The reading pane can also be toggled on or off with this button over here in the top right. The advantage of a reading pane is that it allows you to preview and read emails without clicking them open into a new tab or window. The only downside is that it takes up some room on your screen and since Chromebook screens are not gigantic, you might not like it and might prefer to leave it off. So to finish your setup process, decide if you want your main left menu collapsed or not, and decide if you want your reading pane on or off. It's really easy to change this later. In the next video, we're going to look at strategies that you can use 
Now that you have a new structure for your inbox, that will help you stay organized and on top of all those emails you get.